Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Gorgeous day, 72 degrees out, blue skies, a little bit overcast. So, hope everybody had a great weekend. Welcome to Monday. Today's topic is going to be five minute time limit. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to enjoy being outside. Short sleeves, love it. Not even cold or chilly. It's the end of May. Summer's on its way. All right. So what am I talking about with this five minute time limit? Look, there's gonna be times when something in our life happens in our journey with chronic pain or chronic symptoms. And fear is going to get the better of us, right? Or somewhere in life where something gets us upset emotionally. Anger, sadness, grief, despair, whatever it may be. And grief, I'm going to soften that a little bit. But if something happens that upsets you, or if your symptoms really grab your attention and you start to notice the fear really build up, five minute time limit. Never once have I said, learn to repress your fear, shove it away, make believe you're not afraid. No, that's not what I suggest. I suggest we learn to feel our right now emotions, regardless of what they are. If it's fear about our symptoms, I still think it's beneficial to feel that. Because when we push away our emotions, they don't go away. They just kind of accumulate and tend to multiply. So if you're feeling fear or despair or worry or having anxious thoughts, give yourself five minutes to truly honor how you feel about this stuff. I get it. And just a little thought experiment. Give yourself the opportunity to kind of compare that five minute time limit with your normal habits of feeling that fear, what you'll probably find is that you're spending many, many hours a day, if not the entire day, stuck in that fear loop, catastrophically thinking, worrying, panicking, oh my God, if this doesn't get better, this will happen, that will happen, I can't return to work, my spouse will leave me, pop up, ex, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Versus saying to yourself, all right, let me acknowledge this really, sucks let me feel that right i've heard the phrase it's kind of funny embrace the suck this really sucks and allow yourself that five minutes to really really embrace it and say awful horrible okay embrace it i'm not saying love it i'm not saying you know like it even i'm just saying accept and allow it so that you can feel those emotions, the guttural, brutal, truthful emotions about how you feel about your current health status, your symptoms, your pains, whatever. Allow it. Five minutes. Not five hours, not five days, not five weeks, not five years. Allow it. And look, if that set of emotions starts welling up on you later in the day, allow it. Don't shove it away. Allow it. Put a limit. I'm going to do this for five minutes. I'm going to honor it and respect it. This is difficult, difficult stuff. And I'm going to give myself some grace and respect and honor myself for having the fortitude and strength to keep on getting up and keep on pushing through. And I don't mean pushing through from a grin and bear it and let's fight this. I mean to continue getting up and seeing the opportunity to get better and continuing to move towards that objective of teaching your brain that you're actually safe so the brain turns off the symptoms, makes a different decision for you. So why five minutes? Well, generally, it takes about 90 seconds. If we allow ourselves to feel an emotion, it generally takes about 90 seconds for that emotion to start dissipating because it's been felt. And generally, if we are in a high state of chaos, worry, anxiety, fear, 
Five minutes allows you to cycle through a couple, two or three different emotions and allow whatever you're feeling. Could be sadness, could be grief over your life that you're missing out on, could be anger, pissed off, rage at, you know, where you ended up. Allow yourself to feel it. But then after five minutes, make a switch. Start to shift and pivot. Say, okay. Where was I 10 years ago? Where was I five years ago? Where was I a year ago? Let me start to notice the progress that I've made. And even if you've only found out about this mind-body concept a couple weeks ago, or even a couple of days ago, where was I then and where am I now? Notice the progress. Notice the difference between where you are and where you are today. Remember, I did a video not long ago that I said, focus on the progress, not the ideal result. Because if you're always looking out over there going, that's where I want to be, and now sucks, you're going to continually be in a negative frame. Um, you will not be in a powerful state. You'll be in a primal state where you're always focusing on what's missing, the gap between where you are and where you want to be. So allow yourself that five-minute time limit to experience whatever guttural, brutal feelings you've got. And we're going to pivot. And we're going to start shifting to gratitude and focusing on the progress and the gain that we've made. And look, acknowledge, I'm not ideally where I want to be yet, but boy, am I in a better place now than I was a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago. And if by chance you feel like I'm going the wrong direction because my symptoms are worse, evaluate. Are you putting too much pressure on yourself? Are you judging yourself too harshly for not being better yet? Are you doing more and more work, more and more frantically, because you're desperate to get rid of these symptoms and you feel like the harder I try at this, the better off I'll be? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Watch the calendar. I've been at this three weeks and I haven't seen any changes. I've been at this X number of months and oh my goodness, my symptoms are actually worse. Well, if your symptoms are going a direction you don't want them to go, evaluate your mindset, evaluate your emotional response to the symptoms. Evaluate how long you're staying in that fearful, catastrophic state. Evaluate the words you're using to describe your symptoms. If those words come directly out of a horror film, you know, evaluate and change them and start to speak in such a way that doesn't scare you and confirm the brain's perception of danger, but instead soothes you and reassures you that you're actually not in trouble five minute time limit on the deep dark ugly stuff that gives it presence it allows the opportunity for you to truly feel the guttural truth so it can pass and once you give yourself that five minute time limit you're going to notice you're not going to ruminate as much because if you start ruminating on how horrible you think your life is right now what do you think is going to happen to those emotions they're going to come right back in right so allow yourself to feel. You know, somebody asked me, what does it mean to feel your emotions? It means this. If you have this sadness come over you, what does it mean to feel your emotions? Be sad. Well, what does that mean? It means be sad. Have you ever been sad and cried? Do that, right? Don't overcomplicate this. There's no right way to do it. Everybody feels and responds to emotions differently. Allow yourself to be sad. Acknowledge, wow, I'm really sad. This happened, that happened. Oh, really sad. If tears come out, great. If they don't come out, that's fine too. What does it mean to feel your emotions? Well, if you're really pissed off, do this. Ugh. Scream. Pound the pillow. Do some, like, be mad. You ever get pissed off? Do that. Is there a right way to do it, Dan, so I can feel my emotions to end my symptoms? No, we're not doing it to end our sympt symptoms. We're doing it because emotions are meant to be felt. Because once they're felt, they can release and stop accumulating. So why do we want to feel our emotions? One, because it's a normal human experience. We don't want to deny or reject part of being human. But number two, Sarno's theory was correct, that the brain perceived emotions as dangerous and we needed to be distracted or protected from these emotions 
So this most straight line between the brain perceiving emotions as dangerous and therefore the brain turns on pain or other symptoms to protect us from the dangerous emotions, the straight line to reversing that automatic response by the brain is to continually feel our emotions without judging ourselves harshly for having them in the first place and without ruminating on the story. Right? Five minutes, feel whatever you got to do, but let it go after that. Shift to your progress that you're making or shift to virtually anything else besides your symptoms and your emotions about the symptoms. Now you can think psychologically and go, okay, well, that's how I feel about the symptoms, but what else is going on emotionally? Do I have a person in my life or people in my life or a family or work situation that's really got me upset? Allow yourself to feel them too. Allow them. Because what you'll realize with practice, it takes a little practice, especially for many of us who's been pushing away emotions our entire lives. With practice, what you're going to notice is you're going to be experiencing these emotions in real time as they're happening, or at least at the next opportune time when you step out of the room or to the restroom or whatever. But the emotions stop being quite as intense. Why? Because you're no longer accumulating them. You're not piling anger on top of anger on top of anger. You're just dealing with, hey, that little thing pissed me off, so I'm going to allow it, and it'll pass. So, five-minute time limit is just a concept to allow you to honor whatever is going on, but not to dwell in it all day long, all night long. If you notice yourself going back into it, are you thinking your way back into it, or are the emotions just kind of washing over you? If the emotions hit you again, it's all right. Allow yourself to feel it without judgment. Lose the story. Get out of story mode. Don't ruminate. But allow yourself to feel the guttural, uh, right? So it can pass and you can get back to living your life. Or just allowing whatever normal emotions about normal things are going. But whether it be about your symptoms or about your spouse or your job or your kids or your parents or whatever is going on in your life. Feel the emotion. Lose the story. You already know why you're upset. You don't have to ruminate on the story and tell yourself the story 18 times. And please do yourself a favor. Don't tell everybody you know the same story over and over and over again because every time you tell somebody the story of how awful things are symptom-wise or life-wise, what are you doing? you're creating those emotions again. So rumination isn't just internal. Are you storytelling to other people? Trying to one-up them? Oh, you think your life is bad? Here's what's going on in my life. That's not a game you want to play because nobody wins. Not the other person, not you. You know, I'm sorry. Playing whose life sucks more is not a game you want to play. Why? Because your brain's listening and it might believe you that your life sucks. You think that's going to help you teach your brain that you're safe? No. So, what do you guys think? Five minute time limit. Honor your emotions. Honor what's going on in your life. But don't do it all day long, every day, for years. Give yourself the presence, the grace, the permission to experience the guttural, truthful, truthful feelings so that they can pass. And once they pass, don't grab them, bring them back, and ruminate on it again. And recreate them. Just a little helpful hint about feeling your emotions. And for the person who says, I don't know what it means to feel my emotions, covered it. Experience being sad, angry, grief, fearful, whatever it may be. And if you can, relax your body. And breathe. And if you can get into that nice, relaxed, calm state of physical state, the emotions will be, al be allowed to be felt and release easier than if you're doing this the whole time. So, hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to wrap this one up. I appreciate you. I love you. I know you can all get better. If you want some help, check out the group coaching. Go to painfreeyou.com forward slash join. 
We've got calls on Monday, Tuesday, and two calls on Wednesdays. Go check out the details at that URL, painfreeu.com forward slash join. Um, the people who participate and open their mind to these discussions, the Q&As, sharing the wins, really love it. I think you will too. So hopefully we'll see you in there. If not, as always, whether you join the group or not, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.